The Book of Changes is a symbolic, sympathetic representation of the cosmos. It's premised on the following cosmology or the philosophy of how the universe was created and is structured. The universe is designed by strings of binary code, meaning at its most fundamental level, there are only two possible digit values, light and dark, creative and destructive, assertive and recessive values, flow or no flow. Yes, kind of like what one symbolizes and what zero symbolizes. Interesting enough, the 17th century German mathematician and scientist Gottfried Leibniz is credited with having designed the binary code system in computing around the time he was sent a copy of the I Ching Book of Changes. On screen to the left is from a diagram owned by Leibniz in 1701, sent to him from the French Jesuit missionary Joachim Bouvet. This faded, smudged numbering you see was handwritten onto the page by Leibniz himself. A string of binary code yin and yang values set into a specific pattern creates an electromagnetic signal of sorts representing a specific type of force in this universe that causes changes, alchemical transformations. If you string binary schema of yin and yang values in sets of three or trigrams, there are a total of eight permutations of trigrams or sets of three yin and yang binary values. To get from one to three, you build with two. And when yin and yang values are paired, you get a permutation of four called the four faces or four images. When a string of three values, the trigram is formed, that trigram represents one of the eight fundamental building blocks of life. These eight trigrams are a metaphysical periodic table of sorts, signifying elementals. And when they interact with each other, forming the 64 hexagrams of the Yi, that's when we get alchemical change. Think of these eight as the key ingredients for building a universe. There are five phases of change, the Wuxing, that govern how these eight elemental trigrams interact. These five agents of change, fire, water, wood, metal, and earth, guide our interpretation of the trigrams. Just like elemental dignities in Western alchemy, these five agents of change move the eight trigrams through spiraling evolutions of creation and destruction. So to recap, each building block, these eight fundamental ingredients of life are, according to the cosmology of the I Ching, just ones and zeros. Eight trinities combine in binaries for a total of 64 permutations, or strings of six values of yin and yang, light and dark, creative and destructive, assertive and recessive forces, flow versus no flow. These strings of six are called hexagrams. The 64 hexagrams represent a total of 384 lines of binary code, 64 times 6, and is therefore a scaled down figurative representation of the universe. The eight trigrams interact with each other in cycles, and as the pairs of trigrams engage at varying points of space-time, they create larger cycles, and thus the I Ching is said to be a unit circle, a cosmic mandala, a mandala configured from, essentially, ones and zeros. These 64 hexagrams, equivalent to 384 lines of binary code, reveals itself to be both a map and a divine compass. According to the cosmological theory of the I Ching, any and every change of alchemical transformation in this universe can be attributed to these 64 hexagrams, and every moment of change to one of these 384 lines of binary code that make up the 64 hexagrams. When studied, the 384 lines or values of binary code will reveal profound insights and wisdoms about the universe.
So the Book of Changes is a book of spiritual laws, you could say, philosophical principles, a revelation of how the universe was created and how the universe continues to change. When ritualized into divination methods, the lines will reveal knowledge beyond what we can ordinarily attain for ourselves. In other words, from your current physical vantage point and through your five physical senses, you can only perceive space-time in a very linear way. But with the Book of Changes, which is represented by a circle and signifying cycles, you can perceive space-time in a non-linear and radical way. Within the culture, we don't express the I Ching as being invented. We characterize it as having been received by certain legendary figures or cultural heroes. So the idea of these concepts being received implies spiritual revelation. Now, the mathematical synchronicities you'll find in the I Ching and in Taoist mysticism is really the fun part. You've got the 64 hexagrams for which the theosophical reduction is 10, corresponding with the 10 heavenly stems in East Asian astrology. The lunar solar calendar is a sexagenary calendar, meaning cycles of 60 years or six decades, six tens. And so the Yi cycles of change express time from minutes to eras. 64 times 6, you get 384 lines of binary code, whereby the theosophical sum, 3 plus 8 plus 4, is 15. The Luoshu magic square in Taoist ritual magic consists of the numbers 1 through 9, arranged such that every horizontal, vertical, and diagonal line of the square equals the sum 15. The theosophical sum of 15 is 6, as in 6-bit strings of binary code of the I Ching. The Luo Shu is the cube of space squaring the circle drawn by the cycles and revolutions of the Yi, or changes. In a passage from the Book of Documents, Shang Shu, the Duke of Zhou, asks his brother Ji Shi, where do numbers come from? Ji Shi replies that numbers come from the circle and the square. The square pertains to earth and the circle pertains to heaven. As for the eight trigrams, eight threes, eight times three is 24, which returns back to eight when you multiply two and four, while the theosophical sum of two plus four is six, signifying the hexagram. Eight plus three is 11, another mystical number, whereby one multiplied by one is a return to one, the Tao. And one plus one is the two of the binary code born from the Tao that births the design of the universe. In a subsequent video, I'll walk you through the Yarrowstock divination method, and I hope when you watch that video, you'll pay attention to the ritualized mathematical synchronicities and how principles of mathematics and magic intersect. According to cultural lore, King Wen names the 64 hexagrams. That's where we get the 64 key titles or names. After his death, one of King Wen's sons, the Duke of Zhou, writes lines of text to go with each of the 384 yin and yang lines of the Yi, the sequence received by his father, King Wen. 500 years after King Wen and the Duke of Zhou, Confucius is credited with having written commentaries on the 64 hexagrams, descriptions of the images, judgment, or a formed decisive opinion of each of the hexagrams, and this body of text becomes the Ten Wings, appended to the earlier text attributed to King Wen and the Duke of Zhou. Did Confucius actually write the Ten Wings, or maybe several scholars over several centuries wrote them and just credited their writings to Confucius? You'll have to ask a historian, and that's not me. We now have the 64 names of the 64 hexagrams as received by King Wen, and text assigned to each of the 384 lines, 64 hexagrams multiplied by six lines each, as received by the Duke of Zhou, the son of King Wen. Confucius, or Confucian scholars over the centuries, then writes the Ten Wings, which has become the basis for how we articulate and interpret these six-line diagrams, how we pictorialize these strings of binary code. Altogether, we commonly call this the Zhou Yi, Zhou named after the Zhou dynasty that it originated from, and Yi meaning the changes or change. The singular versus plural situation is a whole thing when we try to translate old texts from classical Chinese to English. 
Another name for the Yi is Yi Jing or Yi Qing, which is probably the name you're most familiar with. Jing just means a scripture. Jing means you're canonizing it as a sacred text. The Bible, the Quran, Buddhist sutras, and the Yi are all referred to as Jing or sacred text. And that's the Yi Ching, a book written in binary code, yin and yang lines that form eight trinities or trigrams, and when stacked together in pairs, result in a permutation of 64 hexagrams as the code for how the universe was created created and how the universe changes, evolves. This is a book of divine truth, philosophical wisdom, but also divination. Before we close out, though, I'd like to take a moment to briefly discuss the English spelling of I Ching versus I Jing and Tao versus Tao. The former is the Wade Giles system of romanizing Mandarin Chinese into English. The latter is called Han Yi Pinyin, the romanization standard created in the 1950s at the behest of Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao. Most of the world has switched over to mainland China's modern system, though the Wade Giles remains popular in Hong Kong, Taiwan, and parts of East Asia that have a challenged relationship with the mainland. As a Taiwanese, I grew up learning Wade Giles and a phonetic system called Po Po Mo Fo, like many overseas Gen X and millennial Taiwanese kids, in my young adulthood, I was forced to switch over and learn pinyin. The result is half of my language education and knowledge base is Wade Giles traditional and half of it is pinyin simplified. That hybrid approach and inconsistency has become part of my sociopolitical identity. But whether it's I Ching or I Jing, Tao or the Tao, we're all speaking to the same core philosophy of the oracle.